Okay, this is a, a very quick VOD review for the second game uh, in Numbani. I spoiler it again. I already did this once, um, but the audio was screwed up again. So it's going to be really quick, and which is fine because not a lot happens. There's only a couple things I want to talk about here. Uh, first, you got in a good team comp. It's full dive, looking good. Um, your play here is is. What, the first thing I want to talk about is you don't really adapt your play to the fact that you're playing against masters and GMs here. And we can see that by you going low and uh, rocket jumping straight <laughs> straight into the, the enemy team that's got like a McCree and a Torb and everything. And uh, maybe 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 you're used to people being able to miss these shots, but you just get dumpstered, which is kind of funny. Um, yeah, don't don't... I wouldn't I wouldn't get that close as a Farah against against like a team like this. But that's that's the first thing. Um the second thing is your is your hero pick that I want to talk about. Your your choice your hero selection here. Um cuz I I feel heavily that you picked soldier after this, not because soldier was good in any way for this game in particular, but because you were most comfortable, it was your next most comfortable hero. Um if you look at what they're running, which you know, you've just seen them. You see it's this death ball they're holding high ground with a shield, with a Torb and a and a McCree and an Anna behind it. This long range poke ability, and your team is running full dive and you switch to soldier. You're not going to do what is you have to think, like as you're switching, what are you going to do? Like what is the plan? Like what is the next thirty seconds going to look like when you leave spawn door? Because if you think, if you had thought about what you're going to do here, you would see you would do nothing, because you know where no matter where you go or what you do, you obviously can't dive like you're behind the shield, your soldier. Your team's going to be diving. You're going to be alone. You go up to a high ground. You're the only one who's going to be shooting at shields because your team's going full dive. So you're never going to punch through this Arisa shield. And, and they are all going to be behind it. And even if, if somehow the shield is down for a couple seconds, there's a diva here with Defense Matrix. Um, you're going to be out DPS by the Torb McCree combo. Soldier just really is not good for the situation at all. You're not, you, 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 there's really no effect. And, and so, like, for instance, Genji would be really, really good here. Genji, this is like one of the best Genji team comps. I like. I would love to play Genji against this team outside, like maybe the Mora. Um, and I know you've, pra I know you can play Genji. I know you practice it a lot. Um, and you can, and just picture like what Genji would have done if you team the fight. You're going full dive. You try this again. You all dive up. This time you have a Genji. You wall climb up and you dash through them all. And you're you're fanning that your blades in the back of them, as opposed to the soldier, which is going to sit back and be shooting into shields. Um, I think this mindset has got to change. Uh, and, it'll, and the mindset will help you actually expand your hero pool when you start picking based on what's best against the enemy team and not just what you're most comfortable with because then eventually you will get more comfortable with other people. Uh, so yeah, that was the the talk that I had there. And you'll see, we see, so I, like I saw this, I hadn't even seen the rest of it, was like, and I was thinking, you're not going to do anything. Like, what are you going to do? Is that a top 500 icon? Is that wave moving or no? doesn't matter. Anyways, yeah, you just sort of get deleted. And that actually was the best case scenario for you right there because there was no shield. So you almost killing the turret there was the best case scenario because for some reason the Rissa didn't have her shield up. How that should have gone is you shot into his shield before you got deleted as opposed to almost killed the turret. So. Uh, oh, there's one more thing I need to talk about. This fight here was a really good call. Everyone going left side through Banana with the speed boost. Um, unfortunately, Zach doesn't really... Has, doesn't play with teams a lot, uh, so he doesn't really know what to do here, and he flubs it hard by going straight onto the point by himself while you guys all go left side. Maybe someone, I don't know if somebody said we're going up the stairs. Should, maybe we should have called that out, but it's also pretty much on Zach because he just goes straight to a point. He probably should have known not to go straight to a point when they have like a McCree and a turret above the point with a shield because Zach almost instantly dies, and he's gone. <laughs> so not much to talk about this fight. Zach just... The, I guess Higgs probably sees that Zach goes there and for solidarity's sake, dies on the point with him. Mikey just jumps off. You should have probably ran here with your point, um, with your with your group. You stay back. But you're against... Again, I don't think you're... Think you're, not, you're not in the mindset of that you're against Masters GM because they saw that you didn't go anywhere, so they're just going to follow you and kill you. Uh, you probably should just ran. But So it was here. I think it's here once you die here, that you you realize 
a minute too late that late a minute this hero pick is not good for this point because you you press square and you like look for other heroes to play after you die here I think you see like wait a minute soldier's not good what else can I play but there's not really a lot of options now Zack has switched to or Noob switched to McCree that was not good Zack almost redeems for the fact that he suicided the last fight by calling out a perfect counter to this, which is the Bastion double shield strat. And uh, it was a great call out, and it basically works. You guys start this fight a man up. The Molten Core is not going to do much because of all the shields. You guys basically you just lose it because of uh, a Diva Bomb that kills two people, like unlucky. It's the stupidest. Quickly becoming one of my least favorite ults because it's not really like most of the time it's just unlucky insta kills that turn a team fight. Uh, and that happened there. So, bummer. Uh, I don't think I have anything to say on defense. The only thing I have to say on defense is uh, we have confirmed proof of noobs hacking here. I want to see it. Noobs is a hacker confirmed. He uh, uses an aimbot uh, program on his PlayStation 4 to kill everything as Torb, and that's how he's a good Torb. But besides that... There's really not much to say. You guys hold it for actually pretty long, but they just overwhelm you in the end with full dive. So yeah, that's it. Like I said, these uh, you guys played well on both for sure. Uh, I I hope we I want to kind of want to rematch them because I bet we could beat them. Uh, um, because it's not like they played super well either. Uh, so yeah, that's about it.